Hi everyone, it's Miss Lynn from the Southington Public Library. And today in our Apple Valley Artist Program for the month of December, we're going to learn all about sculpture. Each month in Apple Valley Artists, we look at a, a new art technique or a little art history or an artist study, and then we create a project on that. And today's, today's topic is called It Figures Sculpture in Action. So we'll learn about sculpture, what exactly is sculpture, how is it made, um, different types of sculpture, and then we're going to be creating some really cool cool uh, tin foil sculptures, and then we'll be making different projects with these. So come along with us. If you've already registered for this program, you received a kit with all of the materials and the instructions necessary to complete this craft and, and a, lot, a lot of information about sculpture too. If you, if you did not register for this program and you have not received a kit, no worries at all. Craft along with us, learn a little art history along the way, and all of the, um, all of the items that you need can be found. If you don't have them already at your house, they can be found at the local dollar store. So um, come along with us and we're going to learn all about sculpture. So what exactly is sculpture? Sculpture is a work of art that is, is, has three dimensions, which is just really a very fancy way of saying it, is that it has shape and it is form. So a two-dimensional work of art, this isn't really art, but is something very flat. So this is a piece of paper, piece of, of cardstock, and I've just drawn a, a picture on it of a shadow, which we will use later, but it's flat. It has no shape, it has my, and no form, it's just completely flat. But this is not a work of art, but this tape dispenser does have shape and form. You can, you can see it, it has, it has a length, it has a width, it has a height, there is a form to it. And that's what sculpture is. So rather than a flat painting or a flat drawing like this, sculpture has a form to it. And um, there's some pretty, pretty famous works of sculpture, if you think about it. So a sculpture can look like a person, like the Statue of Liberty. It could, could look like the Statue of Liberty. Um, it could look like a person you know. You can make a piece of sculpture that looks like a person that you know. Um, the, sculpt the Statue of Liberty is something that you can walk all the way around it. It, it has form. It has definitely, it has height to it. Um, some people say it's not sculpture because it, it wasn't it constructed all in one piece. It was put together, but as you'll see later, I, I do think that this, the Statue of Liberty is a piece of sculpture. So it could be something that you, you recognize. It could be an everyday object that somebody turned into a work of art, re recreated it in a work of art. Um, it could be out in nature. It could be rocks that have been placed in a particular configuration that people, that people walk around or um, different shapes made out of stone, which we're gonna see a little bit later on, or it could be something completely made up from the artist's imagination. Um, these, these Calder uh, mobiles, it would be an example of that. So there are actually two types of sculpture. There's in the round sculpture, and there's something called in relief sculpture. So if you think about if you think about our tape dispenser again, okay, if I, if I look at it, I can see it on all sides. This flat piece of paper, I can only see this on one side and it's flat, but this is something that I can walk around it. I can view this tape dispenser on all sides. And that's exactly like this statue of Edgar Degas's little dancer, age 14. This, so he did a lot of ballet, ballet paintings, but he also did this beautiful sculpture. Um, in, so, so again, in the round sculpture is something that is meant to be viewed on all sides, something you can walk around. In relief sculpture is actually attached, it has form, but it's actually attached to something else. So you can't, it's not meant to be viewed on all sides. It's more, looks like it's, it's going to just jump out at you. Um, for example, here is an alligator that is made out of stone and it's at the entrance to the Liberty Tower in Manhattan. Um, it's a 28-story skyscraper and when you walk in the front door, boom, there is this big, huge alligator. 
Um, there's a lot of different ways that sculpture is made. There's not one way. There's really no one way to do any kind of art. You just kind of try different things and see what you enjoy to do, what you like doing, and, and see what that the end product that you particularly like the outcome for and see how it goes. But there are there are several different methods that people use to make um, to make sculpture. So carving is probably the first thing that we think of. And carving is just when you take you take some sort of substance, some sort of material like stone or wood or ivory, and you have a big block of it, and you can chip at it or shave it down or or cut it, and and then you make a sculpture. So it's like a big block of of something that that you shape down and, and chip away and cut at, kind of like our Harry Potter made out of a big block of butter. Who wouldn't want to see Harry Potter made out of butter? Another way to do it, if you think about last month when we made our, our clay lollipops, we had our Crayola, Crayola Model Magic Clay. Modeling is another kind of way to make sculpture, and that is when you take a soft material like that clay that we used last month, and you shape it by hand and you get it into the form that you want and then you bake it. So we, we did things that you air dry, but there's also um, sculpture that you bake and it makes it last, it makes it stronger and, and lasts a lot longer. So if you look at our, our cat here, our little cat here on his little hamburger, this was made out of polymer clay, which is like the Crayola Model Magic, except it doesn't air dry, you need to bake it. So that's the second way that you can make sculpture. Um, casting, is another way to make sculpture and and when you do this it means you can make the same sculpture over and, and over again so it's kind of hard to explain but if you were to make something out of clay let's say and then you put a mold around it kind of like kind of you put plaster which is kind of like concrete it's a powder you add water kind of like concrete and then you you make a mold around it you put a lot of that plaster around it and you let it harden. When you crack open, when you split apart that, that plaster after it hardens, you're left with the indent. You take out the clay model that you made and you're left with these two pieces that have the outline of your, of your piece of sculpture. So if you think about it, you, you made, let's take our tape dispenser. If I were to take this tape dispenser and then mix some plaster, and, and in case it just keep pouring plaster around it and plaster around it until it dries, when I cut it out and open it, you're gonna have this space where this was, where the tape dispenser was. If I were to take those two pieces of plaster back, mix some water and plaster, pour it into a hole in the top and let it set and harden and reopen that mold again, I'm going to have a, a plaster or stone or concrete shape of this tape dispenser. So that's another, so some, some molds are meant to be used again and again and again. There are silicone molds. That's a whole nother Apple Valley artist. Um, construction, when you think about another way that we make things is we can make them by construction. So um, sculptors can use assorted man-made materials. So some sculptors like to use Tires. They like to take recycled materials rather than have it sit in a landfill. They'll take recycled materials, um, hubcaps or recycled metals, or just about anything. Any, any, any. You can use anything to make sculpture. Or they can take natural materials. They can take um, sticks or rocks or trees or grass or or any of the long grasses maybe that grow near the beach turn those into a kind of a sculpture. And there's different ways you can, you can keep them together. You can weld them, you know, you can, you can heat up metal really, really hot till it gets liquidy and then, and then that kind of rehardens and holds everything together. You can take a screwdriver, screw it together, you can nail it together, glue it. There's, there's pretty much any way you can, there's a lot of different ways, a lot of different kinds of glues or adhesives that you can use to, to make to put different kinds of materials together. So I think on that note, I think what, uh, what we're gonna do is, I think we should just get started with our project. That's what I think we should do. But before we do that, 
Um, I want to tell you what is actually included in your kit. So in your kit, you've got your instruction sheets, which I'm going to go over with you right now. You also got a stick figure um, sketching sheet, and you also had four pipe cleaners, two squares of aluminum foil, two coffee filters, what kind of a project is this, and two squares of cardboard. Mine are yellow, yours are brown. And before we get going, I'd like to do kind of a little warm-up activity. You don't have to do it now, but I did include it in your in your kit. So if you didn't have a kit, this is really a, a really nice way to start it. So here is my stick figure sketching sheet. And um, if for some reason you don't know what a stick figure is, it's just a head, a body, two legs, and some arms. And you can you can make it as, as fancy maybe. Maybe you want to give it some eyes or some hair, totally up to you, doesn't matter. Uh, give it some feet, give it some hands, it doesn't matter, make it however you want. Um, but what I asked you to do was, was just uh, look at these six boxes. And in each box, it kind of is just a warm up, it gets your brain kind of thinking about movement and sculpture and how the way that we hold our bodies and move our bodies expresses emotion and and just you could tell from a picture what someone's doing without putting words on it and telling someone what they're, what they're doing so in our, our first box all I had was a stick figure I'm just gonna make one one more time in our second box we made a stick figure that was running what would it look like if it was running feeling sad, maybe make our, our stick figure feel just kind of down in the dumps, kind of shrug his shoulders down. Feeling happy, maybe just jumping up for joy, catching a football. And one was the artist choice. And what I asked, uh, what I asked people to do is to, to, to draw these as fast as you can without even thinking about it. Just draw it as it comes to you. You can count to 10, but once you get to 10, you gotta put your pencil down or move on to the next box. And it just kind of gets your brain going. So that was the first part of our project. I'm just gonna put that over there. So there's our drawing warm up, And then it's time to sculpt really. So there's enough, there's enough materials in this bag to make two sculptures. But like I said, everything here is, is um, available. Probably if you don't have it at home, which you most likely do, at, definitely at the dollar stores. You are also going to need a couple other things. Um, some scissors would be nice. Some tape. Yeah, you've seen our tape dispenser already. Um, some markers. These, these are optional. A black marker, also optional. And a flashlight. Wow, what, what are we going to be doing today? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to make one one pipe cleaner or one pipe cleaner structure so the very first thing you do is to make each each pipe pipe cleaner sculpture you're going to need two pipe cleaners okay so very first thing you're do, going to do is you're going to take one pipe cleaner and you're going to fold it in half just like this okay make it full and half okay so the first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna start by making the head, okay? So with this, with the open side facing you, or, or, or just straight up and down, you're going to take your pointer finger, here's our bend, okay? You take your pointer finger, put it right into that bend, okay? And then, so there it is right in the bend, and then under the bend, just gonna give a little bit of a twist. So there's the head. Next thing you're gonna do, so we've made the head, that was simple enough. Next thing we're going to do is to keep twisting this down. And if you can see, we're twisting these down until you can see that legs are starting to form. So you keep twisting down until you get your legs to the height that you want them. And then you have your second pipe cleaner. And this is what we're going to use to make the arms. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to bend it again. Okay, just going to bend it. We're not going to put our finger in it this time. We're just going to bend it right in half. Here's our bend right there. It looks like a big turkey drumstick or something or that little wishbone. Um, then you're going to take this. Now think about where you want your arms to be. Okay. And then you're going to take the bend of this paper clip and put it in the back. Okay, so I want my arms to be right about there. I need to secure these and I don't need anything. All I need to do is wrap each arm around once. Okay, so that's the right arm. Now I'm gonna take to me my left arm and wrap it around the body and look, it holds. Now I could, if I wanted to keep my arms this big and this long, I could, um, but I'm gonna cut mine down a little bit. So that's where the scissors come in. These are, because they're pipe cleaner, they're, they're, they're kind of hard to cut. So you might wanna ask a grown up to help you with this part. Okay, and I think I'm gonna do my arms about that length. Okay, perfect. Okay, so the reason why I um, why I gave you this this stick figure sketching sheet was to start to think about how the movement of a person lets you know what's going on in their head or their their emotions or just the way the body moves. So you can go ahead right now. You can you can look at the poses that you made on your stick figure um, sketching sheet and maybe use one of those or come up with another one entirely. But just kind of kind of play around. I'm gonna make mine kind of it's kind of running. I think I'll make a running, a running one. Okay, so it kind of looks like my person is running. <laughs> looks like the way that I run, except my ankles are kind of a little more wobbly than that. So I'll make my ankles kind of like that. But um, you can make your stick figure doing anything. You can make your stick figure dancing, um, really whatever, waving hello. Just kind of play around with it a little bit and see which direction you'd like to take your sculpture in. Maybe I will keep it, keep it kind of running. Maybe I'll move his arm back here. Okay, so I'm going to keep my figure kind of running. And then what we need to do is we need to, to take the aluminum foil. So you're going to take one of your squares of aluminum foil. And we just, um, one, of, one of the ways that, that sculpt, one of the, the things that sculpture is made out of are metals. So this is going to be kind of our metal sculpture. And so you're going to unfold it. If you want to make it really look like metal, you can crinkle it up and then unfold it again. Okay. And then what you're going to do is you're going to use this metal to to place over your pipe cleaners. And for, for me, the easiest way to do this is to put, make this into small pieces, okay? So you could you could cut them into pieces, maybe like three inches high by, by a, a half an inch wide, or you can tear them. I'm just going to go ahead and, and tear mine. I, I like to make long pieces, it's just easier for me. But if they're shorter, you like it shorter, you go ahead shorter. And then all you're going to do is you're going to take your foil and you're going to start wrapping. I'm gonna just wrap this little arm. I think I'm gonna start with an arm. You just kind of keep wrapping around the pipe cleaner. And the foil is really, it's really squishy. You can mold it, it's, it doesn't, uh, it, it has a lot of give to it. It's, it's not something hard that you really have to use your your fingers with and it sticks to itself. You just keep folding it on top of itself. Okay, I've got an arm and I'm gonna go ahead and do the head, I think. The head is kind of probably gonna take you a little bit more time depending on how you wanna do it. If you wanna wrap the head so that you can still see you know, in between it, it might take you a little bit of time, or you might just want to take a piece of foil and and just go ahead and and wrap it all the way around. Just take care of it all at once. Totally up to you. Okay, I think for this one, I think I'm gonna leave the center of the head out. Okay, 
so there's my head okay and you're gonna keep wrapping and wrapping and wrapping until you have it all like this and then you can go ahead and play with it you, it can be an action figure if you want you can take the feet on it and kind of flip it up so it can stand okay and so there's a couple different things that you could do with this you could just play around with it you could make just a foil sculpture and make it really really big don't don't even use the pipe cleaners just make well ask your grown-up first because um, I don't know how much foil you have at home um, and make a giant one um, but there are a couple things to do so I gave you these I gave you some pipe cleaners you should have two pipe cleaners in here and there's a couple things you can do with them. You can actually use your pipe cleaners to make to make uh, a dancer's dress, maybe. Um, or you can decorate it and make it. So here's another one. Or here, you know what? I'll just use this guy. So for this one, I just made a superhero cape. So all I did with this one was I I colored the cape however I wanted it, and then I took my I took my coffee filter and I folded it in half and then I folded it in half again and then I folded it in half again in fact I have a brand new one right here I took my fold my coffee filter and I folded it in half and then I folded it in half again and then I folded it one more time until I had this little cone okay and then I snipped off the top of it for my, my superhero cape. I just snipped off the top of it. Okay, so there's my cone. I just snipped off the top of it and then sliced up a piece out of the front. So here's his little head hole. Put it right over him. And you can make your cape how big or small as you want. And it's kind of just looks like if I fold it backwards, it's kind of just billowing right in the breeze. Um, the dress is is really, really sweet. So if you take some markers, I'll show you how to do that too. If you take some markers and a um, coffee filter, you're just gonna use your, your markers and decorate the coffee filter however you want. So this particular one took two coffee filters. So um, I'm just gonna show you with one in case you wanted to make two dancers. Um, you just take your coffee filter and you decorate it however you want with your marker. Okay, so you can take as much or as little amount of time on it. I'm not gonna take your time with that. Um, and then what do we do? We need to make an, um, something for her head or his head, fold it in half, and, and something for their arms to come out. Fold it in half, fold it in half one more time. Fold that in half one more time. Here's our cone. Cut the tip of the cone off. This is where the head goes. Okay. All right, here it is open. I'm gonna cut a little slice down Kind of near the head, that's where the arms are gonna go, okay? Maybe have a grown-up do this for you, and I'm just gonna put a slice right slit here, and a slit here, and I'll use this one that I made before. Put the arms up, okay? All right, so your arms go right through the armholes, And your head goes through the little hole for the head and then see how I had I have some pipe cleaners left over all I did was I kind of gathered the dress underneath my sculptures body or under her head under her arms kind of like a belt like or like a fancy ribbon in the back okay just like that and you can put the feet like this I know you're gonna take more time <laughs> with yours than I am and if you really play around with it play around with the feet you can actually get these to stand and dance 
All I did for the second one, see how there's two? I just I just used both of my coffee filters and then put it put it up under up underneath the first coffee filter and used another one from another arm to just to secure it underneath. If you want to play with shadow with this, this can be kind of fun too. If you want to play with shadow, I lost my other, oh, let me take this off here. With your, with your um, cardboard, what you can do is you're going to take your piece of cardboard, okay, take your piece of cardboard, take your sculpture, use your tape to kind of make your sculpture stand. Probably should have done this the other way, okay? But let's see what kind of a shadow we can make, okay? So you're gonna take your uh, flashlight. Oops. All right, well, you're gonna have a better flashlight than mine. And then you're going to hold it. You could do this by a window or by a lamp or by a flashlight. And um, it's probably hard for you to see, but by holding the flashlight in back of your sculpture, you actually get a nice outline of it. And so I'm just gonna take my, my, my marker. If I had an extra, you might wanna ask someone to hold it for you. I'm just gonna to make the outline around it. Okay. And then I'm gonna just color it in. And I'm going to do this really fast. I know you're going to take a lot longer than this to do. Okay. And when you color it in, you can really see what changing the shape of your different sculptures, how it changes your shadow. You can hold, you can play with the light too, you know, hold your flashlight really far back or really close up or in different ways and see how shadows move. Um, all the time for all of us as the day goes on and um well that's that's our project for today i hope you learned a little bit about sculpture i know i learned a lot about sculpture and and i had a lot of fun playing with all these different materials i never knew that you could make a dress out of or a cape a superhero cape out of a coffee filter um probably something that your your grown-up already has at home and i i hope you enjoyed learning about, about sculpture and, and Apple Valley artists, because I really enjoy putting this, this, um, this monthly program together for all of you. So have fun sculpting. I'll see you next month. Bye, everyone.